Hi everyone. In a uh, previous video I showed how to use this Raspberry Pi as a uh, web server and we got it working with um, our own domain names so that way you could have a .com point to your Raspberry Pi. And in this video I'm going to expand on that and I'm going to show how to use this Raspberry Pi as a VPN server. Um, so what a VPN is is a way for you to connect to, uh, in this case, uh, the Raspberry Pi's local network, so like your home network, uh, to be able to connect to that network when you're away from home. So for example, if you are at work and you want to get access to something on your home network, like a network hard drive or a network printer, uh, you can use a VPN server. Also, uh, and perhaps more importantly, if you are traveling, and you want to get access to uh, your home internet service, you can use it. So for example, a lot of times if you leave the US, services you might expect to work will not. So a lot of music streaming websites like Pandora don't work outside of the US or outside of the US and a few other countries. Also, some countries um, heavily filter their, their internet uh, for example, China blocks everything related to Google. They block Facebook, Twitter, um, a lot of other stuff. And in this video, I'm going to show how to set up a VPN server. And I've actually used it in Shanghai, China, and it works great. So um, anyway, let's get right to it. Um, again, we're going to set up a VPN server on the Raspberry Pi. And then I'll show how to set up a VPN client on your normal Windows computer and also on an Android smartphone or, or tablet. All right, so we're back at our uh, regular computer. And uh, again, I, I, I showed how to set up that Raspberry Pi in a previous video, and I will include a link to that video in the description uh, down below. You'll want to check that out if you have not already, because it'll explain how to give your Raspberry Pi uh, its own domain name, like its own .com. Anyway, um, so carrying on from there, let's open up TerraTerm and uh, connect to your Raspberry Pi. Uh, just like in the previous video, um, you know, use the IP address, select SSH for secure shell, type in your username and password, and then uh, click OK. All right, so now we're logged into the Raspberry Pi and we can start setting up the uh, server. There are two programs we need to install. Uh, one is OpenVPN, which is the VPN server, and the other is Stunnel or S-Tunnel, which we will use to um, kind of disguise the VPN. Uh, basically, you have the VPN kind of wrapped in the Stunnel um, SSL uh, layer and it makes it harder for people to detect if you're using a VPN if you do it that way. Alright, so let's install the software. Alright, so we have um, sudo, which again is super user do, uh, run this as an administrator, apt-get install to install a new package, and the two package names are openvpn and stunnel4. Actually, I forgot the 4. There we go, and Stunnel 4. Press Enter, and confirm by pressing Enter again. All right, so the software is installed, and now we need to configure it. Um, there's a lot of steps involved, but it is very easy. So uh, just watch through the video at least once, get a feel for what's going on. Uh, again, there's a lot of steps, but it, it, it's really not difficult, so don't worry. Um, the majority of these commands we need to do as an administrator. So instead of doing sudo uh, in front of every command for like 10 or 15 commands, we can use sudo-s and that will basically log you in as a uh, root, as an administrator. And uh, now everything we do is as an administrator. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is make the encryption keys and certificates for OpenVPN. 
Okay, so we call a command called make CA dir. Um, CA stands for certificate authority, and I'll get into that in a second. And then we give it the path that we want it to use. Um, so um, slash etc. slash openvpn is where all of the openvpn configuration fi files will be. And then we can create a subdirectory called ezrsa. Press enter. Now let's go to that directory. If we uh, look inside the directory with ls, we see there's a whole bunch of files. Um, what we want to do now is call source and then dot slash bars. That kind of configures everything for this process. And uh, so now what we need to do is call clean all. Basically, that'll reset anything that's in, in the directory to start us fresh. Press enter. That was quick. All right, now what we need to do is call um, dot slash build dash ca. So like I said earlier, um, the first step we need to do is create our certificate authority. Um, so this can be kind of confusing because if you're not familiar with encryption, there's a whole lot of terminology. I'll try to explain it and keep it simple. So in, in the real world, if you get a, a physical certificate, like, like a, a diploma or something, obviously, you know, it, it'll look all fancy. It'll have like calligraphy and it'll have the, the fancy border. But the thing that makes that certificate valuable isn't just its appearance. It's that somebody noteworthy says that this is real. So like if it is a diploma from a university, it probably has a signature from, uh, I don't know, is it the dean or the, the chancellor or whoever, some, some noteworthy person at that university will have signed the diploma. And, and that gives it its credibility. Basically, somebody noteworthy is vouching that this piece of paper, this certificate, is real. Well, with electronic certificates, it's the same way. Um, anybody can generate one. It's really easy to do. But you need an authority, somebody that everyone can trust, that we can use to verify that this certificate is either real or was it faked by some, some middleman trying to eavesdrop on your connection. And that's what a certificate authority is. You're basically making uh, the encryption version of a trustworthy person. And that trustworthy person will be signing all of your other certificates. So basically, we create a certificate and a key. And that's called the certificate authority. And we use that to sign all other certificates that we will, we will be making later on. That's what we're doing right now. So if that was kind of difficult, don't worry. You don't need to actually understand how it's working, but hopefully it's a little more clear. All right, so dot slash build dash CA, press enter. It will go ahead and create an RSA private key. And uh, in this step and in a bunch of future steps, we'll be asked about um, five or 10 questions. In a certificate, there's a bunch of fields that kind of describe who the certificate belongs to, where they're located. And this first question is the country name. Now, it has a default value listed here in the brackets. And if you press enter, it'll use that default value. You can also type anything you want. Um, I mean, you could put in, I don't know, UK or whatever, anything. Or if you want to explicitly leave it empty, just to put a period. So I'm going to leave it empty because we don't need it, um, and it, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to put a period, press enter. Same thing for state or province. I'm going to leave it empty, so I'm going to press, or press period, press enter. Locality name, same thing, period, enter. Organization name, same thing, period, enter. Organizational unit name, same thing, period, enter. Common name. The common name is the only part of a certificate that is really required. And it specifies who the certificate belongs to. So for example, if you log into your bank's website and you know there's that padlock icon at the top telling you you have a secure connection, uh, in case you're not aware, you can click that icon and you can actually view the certificate. 
And so if your bank is, uh, I don't know, Chase or whoever, if you click on that, you'll see that the certific certificate belongs to Chase.com or you know, Bank of America.com or, or whatever. That's the common name. So if you have a .com, you can type that in here. Like in the demo that I did in my previous video, we set it up on cgartwork.com. I could type that in here. Um, all that really matters is it should describe who the certificate belongs to. Uh, I'm just going to put in VPN server. So in this case, again, we're setting up the certificate authority on the Raspberry Pi. And the Raspberry Pi is also going to be the VPN server. So I'm going to call my Raspberry Pi VPN server. All right, press enter. Name, I'm going to leave that empty with a period. Press enter. Email address, same thing. Period, enter. And that's it. So we have now created our certificate authority. Now what we do is we're going to create certificates for the server, which is the Raspberry Pi again, and certificates for every client. So in my in this demo, I'm going to show you how to set it up with your Windows PC. I mean, like 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 here um, with your your laptop or desktop will be one client, and I'm also going to show how to use it on an Android phone, and that'll be the second client. So we need to create three certificates, one for the server, which is your Raspberry Pi, one for my Windows desktop computer, and one for my Android phone. We can call the first command dot slash build key, uh, build key server, so build dash key dash server, space, and then the common name. So again, I'm going to reuse what I used before, which is VPN server for the common name. And that will be, um, or because we're making the key for the server, that will be the identifier for this key. So I'm going to call it VPN server. Again, you, right here you can type in the common name. So anything you want to identify your Raspberry Pi VPN server is what you can put here. Press enter. It will create another RSA private key. And just like before, we have all these things we can enter. Um, period, enter, period, enter, period, enter, period, enter. Okay, now you'll see here that the default value was what I had typed in earlier. It's from when I typed in this command. So we can just press enter and it'll use that default value, which is what we want. Period, to leave it empty, enter, period, enter. You can add a password if you want, but for personal use, it's really not that important. I'm gonna leave it empty, so just press enter. Don't, don't press period, just press enter. Again, company name, you can leave that empty. Just press enter. And now it will ask you to verify that you actually want to sign the certificate using the certificate authority we created earlier. So press Y for yes. Press enter. Again, press Y. Press enter. All right, so we now have our server key. Now we need to create two more keys, one for the Windows desktop and one for the Android smartphone. So now we use a similar command, which is build key. And again, we, we need to provide the common name. So I'm going to call this one, um, let's say, desktop client. So again, I'm going to identify this Windows computer with a common name of desktop client. Press enter. And again, just like before, we've got a bunch of questions. Period, enter period, enter. Again, when you get to common name, it will have listed what you typed in earlier as the default, which is good. So just press enter. And then again, period, enter. Same thing, you can type, you can use a password if you want. You don't need to, I'm gonna leave it empty. Again, I'm gonna leave it empty. Again, yes, we want to sign it. Press Y, press Enter. 
press Y, press Enter. Okay, so now we have only one thing left is one more certificate, and this time for the smartphone. So I'm going to press up arrow to bring up the last, uh, the last command. And now I'm going to call it smartphone client. So dot slash build key, and then whatever identifier, whatever common name you want for your second client, which in my case will be an Android smartphone. Okay, press enter. All right, just like before. Press enter for common name to leave the default. Press Y, press Y. Okay, so by now we've generated all of our uh, certificates and keys for OpenVPN. <clears throat> we have that first certificate authority, certificate and key. We used that certificate authority to cre then create three more. We created a certificate and key for the VPN server, which we called VPN server. We created a certificate and key for the Windows desktop, which I called uh, desktop client. And then we created a certificate and key for the Android smartphone, which I called smartphone client. So we're done with that step. What we need to do next is to uh, build the Diffie-Hellman parameters. Um, so this is kind of an encryption thing. Don't worry too much about the details. But if we do this step, we have uh, the ability to use some um, better encryption ciphers. Um, if you really care about the details, you can uh, research Diffie-Hellman parameters and perfect forward secrecy, PFS. Anyway, um, the command we need to call is build dh. So dot slash build dash dh. Press enter. Now, like it says here, it is going to take a long time uh, this will be about probably 10 or 15 minutes, maybe even a little bit longer. All right. So, yeah, that took a very long time, uh, longer than I thought it would take. Anyway, so don't worry, that is the, um, the most time-consuming part of this entire process, and that's the only one. Okay, so by now we've generated uh, all of the keys and certificates we need. All of that is set up for OpenVPN. Um, let's now configure the OpenVPN server. So we're going to do nano slash etc slash OpenVPN slash server dot conf. CONF. And that is the name of the uh, configuration file we're going to use. Press enter. As you can see, it's empty. It does not exist yet. I'm going to go ahead and type it all out. Uh, there's a bunch of lines. Don't worry, I'll, I'll kind of quickly review what they do at the end. Okay, so there's the uh, server configuration file. Um, I'll give you a brief overview of what this does, but I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail because this video is already uh, getting kind of long. Um, so port 1194 tells it what port number to run the OpenVPN server on. Protocol TCP or Proto TCP. Uh, we need to use that. If you look at other examples, they'll often show UDP instead of TCP. Uh, we need to use TCP because we're going to use um, Stunnel to wrap uh, the OpenVPN connection. Um, we need to use TCP. Uh, UDP will not work with Stunnel. All right, um, DevTun or D-E-V-T-U-N. Um, 
TUN-MTU-1500, TUN-MTU-Extra-32, MSS Fix-1450, 1450. I don't know exactly what those do. I mean, I've researched it, but I don't really know enough to, to properly uh, explain it. But I know that part of it is um, fixing issues um, with other software to make it work, like the MSS Fix. Um, I believe the other two lines just set up timeouts, and um, DevTun is a, a particular configuration for the VPN. So um, we have CA and then the path to our certificate authority certificate. We have CERT and then the path to our uh, VPN server certificate key, and then the path to our VPN server key, DH, and then the path to our Diffie-Hellman parameters file. Um, so I forgot to mention earlier um, the difference between a certificate and a key. A certificate is the public part. It is not a secret. A key is the private part. It is a secret. So anytime you have a key, that is not something you share. That is a secret. Just like a key to your house, you don't share it uh, unless you know the person. So likewise, a certificate, it's public. You know, like on a diploma, you might put it in a picture frame and hang it up on the wall for everyone to see. A certificate is not a secret. It is public. All right. Down here, we have server and then an IP address 10.8.0.0, and then a mask of 255.255.255.0. Um, we have push, and then double quote, redirect dash gateway, def1, def1, and then bypass dash DHCP, and then your end second uh, double quote. Push, double quote, DHCP option, DNS 8.8.8.8, and then another one, which is 8.8.4.4. So these three lines basically tell the server, whenever we have a client connect, tell it to use these DHCP servers. So 8.8.8.8 and 8.8.4.4 are uh, free public DNS servers provided by Google. And you want to use this option so that if you are somewhere where, um, well, not somewhere, uh, anywhere you go, you're going to be using the DNS servers. And by default, it will be whoever your internet service provider is. But if you're using the VPN to get around um, internet filtering, if you use the local DNS servers, it isn't going to work. So uh, while the traffic might be encrypted, if you're using the local DNS, they may not give you the IP address for what you're looking for. Anyway, so those three lines configure that. Keep alive 530 is a, a timeout thing. Comp dash LZO uh, enables some compression. Persist dash key, persist dash ton. Uh, to be honest, I don't really know a whole lot about that status and then slash var slash log slash openvpn.log is where the log file will be and verb three uh, is just how verbose we want the, the log file to be so again you don't need to know details about all of these uh, the main issue is make sure the four paths to your certificate uh, certificates key and uh, diffie hellman parameters make sure they're accurate Make sure you have protocol set to TCP. Do not use UDP. And uh, yeah, so control O to write. Press enter. Control X to exit. OK, so right now we have the OpenVPN uh, server configured. And actually, what I forgot to do earlier is if we use ls to list the contents of this directory, if we go into the keys uh, subdirectory and list the contents again, this is where those files we uh, we just mentioned in the in the configuration file are. So ca.cert, ca.key, vpn server.cert, vpn server.key, and then the ones we made for the client, which I, I called uh, desktop client 
and then one for the smartphone called Smartphone Client. That's where those files are. These are where the uh, public certificates and private keys are located. Anyway, you don't need to know all that, but just in case you're wondering, that's what those paths were for. Um, let's go ahead and restart the OpenVPN server. Service, OpenVPN, restart, press enter. So right now we have the, OP, the OpenVPN server running. Um, if you were to connect to it, you would have access to your local network, but you would not have access to the internet. That's because we have not set up uh, IP forwarding yet. We need to do that, and we'll do that right now. Okay, so we're editing a file. Um, actually, let me exit out. Okay, so in case you didn't catch it earlier, um, nano slash etc slash sysctl.conf press enter. So this is your system control configuration file. We need to uh, scroll down. Okay, on the line where it says net.ipv4.ip underscore forward on equals one, we need to uncomment that line. So get rid of that um, pound sign or hash or whatever you want to call it. Um, make it like that. And then we just need to save the file with control O. Press enter and exit with control X. Now we need to make that change go into effect. So SYS CTL dash P. And it's uh, showing us that we have that one line that changed and it has gone into effect. Now we need to set up a IP tables rule. All right, so the command is IP tables dash T NAT N A T dash capital A post routing <clears throat> dash S and then the IP address of 10.8.0.0 slash 24 dash O E T H zero dash J masquerade. Press enter. And we now need to make it so that rule is persistent so it's always there even after we restart. So apt get install IP tables dash persistent. Press enter. Press enter to confirm. All right, it's going to ask if we want to save our current rules for IPv4. And yes, we do. Press enter. And again for IPv6. Yes, we do. Press enter. We're pretty much done now with OpenVPN, uh, at least for the server. Um, now we need to configure the um, Stunnel or S Tunnel server. Um, so I'm not sure if I, I explained it very well at the beginning, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of cover it again. OpenVPN is the actual VPN server, and technically you can use that by itself. The problem is if you go somewhere where they have where they filter their internet, it's possible to detect OpenVPN traffic. It is encrypted, but it's uh, it's possible to tell if that encrypted traffic is because of a VPN. And a way to get around to that is by wrapping the OpenVPN connection in a SSL connection, which is the type of connection that uh, when you go to a secure website, you know, HTTPS, um, that is an SSL connection. So we're using Stunnel to wrap OpenVPN, and that does a pretty good job of disguising the VPN traffic. And it looks like you're just on an encrypted web page the entire time. So technically, you don't need to do this, but I'm going to do it. And um, if you want the, the rest of this video to make sense, I'd recommend you do it anyway. We need to go to the um, Stunnel configuration directory. So cd slash etc slash Stunnel, press Enter. And uh, we're going to start by creating a um, self-signed um, certificate and key. So just like with OpenVPN, we use um, public key encryption. Um, same with um, Stunnel. And we're just going to create another uh, certificate and key. So we have OpenSSL Gen RSA dash out key dot pem and 2048. 
So we're telling it to create a, um, a private key. We're going to use the RSA um, cipher. The, out, the name of the output file is key.pem, and we're going to use a 2048-bit key. Press Enter. Now we need to create a um, self-signed certificate using that key. All right, so we have OpenSSL REQ-new-x509-key.pem. Dash out cert dot pem dash days thirty five sixty. So we're telling it to uh, to make a new um, self signed certificate. We're going to use the key that we generated in our previous command, which saved a key dot pem file, and we're going to output the public certificate as cert dot pem, and we're going to make this certificate valid for uh, three hundred or. 10 years, so uh, 356 times 10, that many days. Uh, press enter. Just like earlier, we have all these options we can enter in, and I'm going to use period to make most of them empty. So period, enter. For the uh, common name, you can use your server host name. So I'm going to just use VPN server. Press enter. Okay, so now we have two files. We have key.pem and we have cert.pem. Um, we can combine them into one file using the cat command, which will concatenate multiple files. And we'll, uh, we'll put both of those files into one file. We'll call that stunnel.pem. So we have cat key.pem, or I'm sorry, cert.pem, key.pem, and we're going to put them into stunnel.pem. This last part is only required if you want to um, have an Android device connect to your VPN server. The Android app that I'm going to show you how to use, um, it will not work with a .pem file. It wants a pkcs12 file, and we can convert our .pem file into a .p12 file, which is the file format used for pkcs12. So we have OpenSSL pkcs12, which is the file format we want. We're going to export that file format. The name of the output file will be stunnel.p12. Our input key is key.pem, and our input um, certificate is cert.pem. Press enter. And it'll ask to enter an export password. We can leave that empty. Press enter. It'll ask you to verify. Leave, leave it empty. Press enter. And we're uh, pretty much done. If we uh, type in ls, we have our stunnel.pem, which will be used by stunnel. We have our stunnel.p12, which will be used on our Android phone. And then we have the individual certificate and key uh, files. We've done the majority of the work there. All we need now is to create the configuration for Stunnel. So nano stunnel.conf, C-O-N-F, press enter. And like before, I'm going to type in a bunch of lines, and then I'll uh, briefly explain what's going on afterwards. We have chroot equals slash var slash lib slash stunnel4. PID equals slash stunnel4.pid. Set UID equals stunnel4. Set GID equals stunnel4. Those four lines basically run um, stunnel in a little, um, I guess you'd call it like a little, like a little sandbox or a little jail. Um, basically, it, it restricts the ability of Stunnel to access the rest of the system, and that's important for uh, security. Um, we have 
socket, and then that's an L, not a number one, but an L. Colon TCP underscore no delay equals one, and then socket R colon TCP underscore no delay equals one. And then cert equals slash etc slash stunnel slash stunnel.pim. And that's kind of the last of the configuration for stunnel. Um, this uh, second part is telling Stunnel how to work with one service. So um, Stunnel can handle multiple connections going to multiple different things. Uh, in this case, we're only having it forward things, forwarding things to OpenVPN. So we only have one section. So we have the, the two brackets and we have OpenVPN. Except equals 443 means that um, Stunnel will listen to TCP port 443. And uh, if it receives um, a valid connection request, um, you know, using the appropriate um, encryption and everything, like your certificate and key, um, it will then connect that data to localhost colon 1194, which is our OpenVPN server. And then the certificate that it is expecting would be um, slash et cetera, slash stunnel, slash stunnel.pem. So that's pretty much it. We'll write the file with control O, press enter, and exit with control X. And then uh, we need to edit one more file. So nano slash et cetera slash default slash stunnel four. And we want to go down to the line where it says enabled. and change zero to one. So now we need to actually enable it uh, for automatic startup. Save the file by pressing Control O, press enter, and Control X to exit. And we're pretty much done setting up the server. Uh, what we can do now is we can restart the Raspberry Pi to make sure that everything's gonna work when it powers back up. Um, you don't have to restart, but it's just a good idea because we're making a lot of changes and if there was a mistake, we'd like to know if there's a problem now instead of later on uh, the first time we restart the Raspberry Pi. Anyway, so shut down dash R for restart and then now. So shut down dash R now, press enter, and the Raspberry Pi will now start to shut down and our TerraTerm connection will close because we lose a network connection. And that happens. Okay, so now what we need to do is uh, in a minute or two, the Raspberry Pi will finish restarting. We'll connect back to it. Um, but the majority of our work now is just on our Windows PC and on the Android smartphone. And it, it's very little work, so we're, we're mostly done. On our, on our Windows computer, we need to install um, Stunnel and OpenVPN. So open up a web browser. And we need to download those two um, software packages. So if you search for Stunnel and go to the download page on stunnel.org. So there is a bunch of different versions here. We want the installer.exe, which is for Windows. You click on that, it will start downloading. Um, you'll notice that there is a Android version. We're not going to use that on our Android smartphone because it is not a app. It is just a command line program. And on a phone, that gets kind of annoying. So just do the Windows installer. Um, now let's go ahead and download OpenVPN. So if you search for OpenVPN, click on the downloads link uh, for openvpn.net. And there's a bunch of different versions. Um, go ahead and download the, the latest version and the version for uh, whichever version of Windows you have. So I'm using Windows 10, so I'll download the version for Windows Vista and later. Okay, so both files have uh, finished downloading. I'm gonna bring up that folder, and then I'm gonna go ahead and close out of Chrome. <clears throat> okay, so we have our two installers. Let's go ahead and install them. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do Stunnel first. Double click on it. And uh, yes, run the program. We get a license agreement. You can agree if you want, hopefully. 
Uh, install it for anyone using the computer. Uh, the defaults are fine. That's fine. Click install. And it looks like it is uh, going to create another uh, certificate. We don't really need that, but we'll go ahead and we'll go ahead and jump through these hoops. So uh, period enter, period enter. Um, you can just leave the default, press enter. So we're not actually going to use that certificating key, but it was there, so you can just you can just do that. Um, you can check start stunnel after installation uh, if you want, um, and then go to finish. So if you see down here, we have the uh, icon that says server is idle. If you, oh, it's right there. If you uh, right click on it and you go to edit configuration. So it's gonna open up the configuration file in uh, Notepad or your default text editor. Uh, it has uh, a bunch of stuff. Every line with a uh, semicolon is a comment. So a lot of this is just, uh, you know, examples. Let's go ahead and uh, erase all of this. So select everything, backspace, and uh, I'm going to uh, replace it with uh, only five lines. It's really quite simple. Yeah, we have five lines. Um, you give it a name for the service which I'm gonna call OpenVPN, of course. In this case, we're setting up a Stunnel client. So client equals yes, uh, except equals 1337 means that um, Stunnel is gonna listen on port 1337. If it receives um, communication on that port, it will then forward it through an SSL connection to cgartwork.com colon 443. Now, um, if you didn't watch my previous video, uh, again, I have a link to it in the video description. You should really watch that. Don't type in cgartwork.com. That is the domain name that I set up uh, for testing the Raspberry Pi that I happen to own. Um, you need to use your own domain name. If you try to use this one, it will not work. So connect equals and then your domain name dot com or dot whatever, colon 443. <clears throat> 443 is the port uh, that is by default used for SSL. So when you go to a website that is uh, secure with HTTPS, by default that is on port 443. That's where this comes from. And then um, cert equals and then make this the path to your stunnel.pem, which we will have to copy over in just a minute. So uh, for me, I was I was checking here earlier. It'll be C colon slash users slash my username, which is feral F, and then slash documents. And I'm going to create a text file in here called stunnel.pem. So actually, let's do that right now. Right click, new text document. Call it stunnel.pem and get rid of the .txt. Press enter. And yes. Right click, open with, more apps, notepad. Okay. All right, so we now have an empty text file. We need to, uh, well, here, we can save this and close out of it. File, save, file, exit. Okay, we need to copy over our stunnel.pem from the Raspberry Pi. So bring up TerraTerm again, connect to your Raspberry Pi again. Uh, just like before, this may not be the IP address you need to use. Um, I, I explain in my other video, again, linked below, I explain in that video how to figure out the IP address of your Raspberry Pi, how to make it static so it doesn't keep changing, and all that. Check out that video if you have not seen it. Okay, anyway, so connect to your Raspberry Pi. Type in your username and password. Click OK. All right, so we're connected back to our Raspberry Pi. We need to get to that stunnel.pem file. So if you try cat slash etc slash stunnel slash stunnel.pem, you will get the file. 
it's a simple text file, so we can just click and drag. to copy it. Like I mentioned in my previous video with uh, TerraTerm, if you just select text, it will automatically copy that and put it into your clipboard. Don't press Control C, that won't work. All right, go back to Notepad and you can paste. All right, so the certificate is here. This is the public part. And the key is here. This is the uh, private part. Now, obviously, you guys are seeing the key. Uh, I, I'm well aware of that, <laughs> and this is all going to be uh, formatted and starting over before I even edit the video. So uh, yeah, in in real life, don't ever share this. This is a secret. This is what's keeping your connection secure. You should not be sharing that with people online or with uh, anybody you don't trust. Anyway, again, I'm going to be uh, formatting this uh, card, and uh, yeah, that won't be an issue for me. Okay, save the file, file save, and exit. Okay, so can uh, minimize this. All right, we have configured the Stunnel client, but it is still using the old configuration. So go back to the Stunnel icon, right click, choose Reload Configuration. Go back to your Stunnel icon, right click, choose Show Log Window. And you should see configuration successful. Now you're going to see a warning about how we need authentication to prevent man in the middle attacks. Don't worry, we do. Uh, OpenVPN is encrypted. That's what we were doing uh, earlier on we, when we did the certificate authority and the build server key or key server, whatever that was. That is the authentication. Anyway, again, you need configuration successful. If this doesn't work, you need to fix it before you move on. It isn't, it isn't going to get any better if it doesn't work. Um, check your configuration file um, that we just did in Notepad. Check that for any typos. Make sure your your uh, stunnel.pem file is where you told it it would be. Make sure it's readable and all that stuff. Anyway, so that's good configuration successful. Let's go ahead and install uh, OpenVPN. So again, we downloaded that earlier. Double click on it. Yep, go ahead and open it. Uh, agree, hopefully. Defaults are all fine. That's fine. And yeah, we can go ahead and install the uh, tap adapter. And uh, we don't need to see the README. And then um, we don't need to start the GUI right now, but uh, just go ahead and click Finish. All right, so there's links on your desktop, obviously, for Stunnel and for OpenVPN, which is good. <clears throat> what we need to do now is create a uh, configuration file for the OpenVPN client. And uh, don't worry, this is uh, pretty easy. It's the last step. I know where it's been a long video. Um, I hope you guys are still hanging in there. If you go to your Documents folder, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and create another another text file. So right click new text document and, uh, and give it a name. You can name it whatever you want. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call it home VPN and give it a .ovpn file extension and get rid of the .txt. So uh, again, I, I'm calling it home VPN. You can call it whatever you want. This file name is not important. I just happen to have my Raspberry Pi VPN server in my home, so that's what I'm calling it. Okay, but you have to give it the .ovpn extension. Press Enter. Yes. All right, so right-click on it. Choose Open With. More apps. Uh, where did, nope, oh, there we go, Notepad. Um, we want to use Notepad. Do not check Always Use. We don't want to always use Notepad. Just right now we want to. Don't check that. All right, click OK. So we have our empty text file. <clears throat> and I'll go ahead, and like before, I'll go ahead and write it all out. And then I'll explain kind of what we're doing afterwards.
a lot of the, the first part is identical to the, the server, except we now have a client. Um, remote localhost 1337 basically means that on our Windows computer, when we try to make a open VPN connection, we're actually connecting to the local computer on port 1337, which is where our um, Sunnel service is listening. So basically you have your, your computer connect to your computer and then through Sunnel, it will connect to your Raspberry Pi. And on the Raspberry Pi, Sunnel will then connect to the VPN server on the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and then route, and then again, I, I'm listing cgartwork.com. That's my domain that I'm using for this demo. Don't use that, it isn't gonna work. You need to use your own domain. Uh, again, that's all covered in the previous video and I have a link to that down below. All right, we have a um, IP mask of 255.255.255.255, net gateway. Okay, so the rest of this I've pretty much covered all before. Um, authentication no cache means we don't store authentication stuff in memory, which is a security thing. Uh, remote cert TLS server is another security thing. It helps to prevent um, man in the middle type attacks. Uh, we support compression, we can log. Okay, anyway, um, this is kind of um, some new stuff. Oftentimes, if you look at examples of how to use OpenVPN, um, instead of embedding the certificates and key in the configuration file, um, you can just have it reference another text file. So you could put, you could put your certificates and key over here in, in individual files if you want. Um, but I find that kind of annoying. I like to have um, I like to have it all in one file. I, I want to have like you know homevpn.ovpn and just have it be one file. And we can do that by by embedding our certificate authority certificate and then our uh, desktop PC um, certificate and key directly in the file. So what we can do is if we go back to the Raspberry Pi, like earlier where we where we uh, used cat. To, uh, to look at the contents of a file. We can do that again uh, for these other files. Okay, so just to make it easy, I'm gonna do sudo s, which will let us run a bunch of commands as an administrator. cd slash etc slash openvpn slash easy rsa slash keys. Again, if we use ls, we can see we have all our files there. Uh, the first file we want to look at is our certificate authority certificate, which is ca.cert. So we use cat ca.cert. And we go ahead and copy this text. Don't forget to include the uh, begin certificate and end certificate. We need that. So control V to paste, or you can right click and paste. So we have um, kind of like the HTML notation where we have the angle brackets, we have CA, put the certificate text here, and then closing uh, tag CA. And repeat for the, um, the desktop certificate and key that we created earlier. So again, on the uh, Raspberry Pi, uh, we called them desktop-client.key and .cert. So the uh, certificate also has a bunch of other stuff. We don't need we don't need all that. We just need the uh, the certificate text down here at the end. All right, and finally we need the key. Okay, so again, a key is secret, and obviously you guys have all seen the key, and like I mentioned before, I'm going to be forwarding this card, uh, this SD card, before I even edit the video. Um, but yeah, in real life, you don't want people to see the key. A key, just like a key to your house, uh, is a secret. You don't share it. <laughs> okay, so we have uh, everything in our configuration file. We can go ahead and save it. File, save. 
we can go ahead and close out of that. We can go ahead and minimize the um, Terra term window. So right now it should work. If you right click on the OVPN file, choose start open VPN on this config file. Okay, yeah, it looks like I actually um, forgot a really important part. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, close that window. Okay, so what I did and I, I didn't mention is I went to the um, Stunnel icon. If you right click and go to Show Log Window. <clears throat> so earlier we got to here, we had Configuration Successful. And this is what we just did right now. Um, we see here Connection Refused um, and then Zero Byte Sent and then it retried a few times. Okay, so we set up our um, our uh, Raspberry Pi and it, hopefully it's all working correctly. We're gonna find out shortly. What I forgot to do is on my router, I need to set up port forwarding uh, for TCP port 443. So I'm gonna go ahead and log into my router and I've covered this in my previous video. All right, so I'm logged into my uh, router. As I've mentioned in the previous video, um, it'll probably be different for you and you'll need to do a little bit of research to figure out how to make it work. If you find the model number of your router and then research that model number and the phrase uh, port forwarding, um, you should be able to figure it out. So on my particular router, um, after you log in, you go to WAN, W-A-N, which is Wide Area Network. You go to Virtual Server Port Forwarding. All right, so um, as I set up in the previous video, we have our web server, Apache, and it's on port 80. We now need to create another uh, port forwarding uh, configuration for the VPN server. So I'm gonna go ahead and give the service name uh, VPN server. That can really be anything you want. It's just for, uh, for your benefit so that you know what's going on. It doesn't have to be VPN server. Uh, port range is going to be 443. Again, that is the default port number for SSL, like uh, HTTPS, encrypted web page. It's all going to be by port 443 by default. Uh, the local IP will be uh, whatever your Raspberry Pi happens to be. And local port will be 443. Protocol is TCP. I'm going to add that. And I'm going to save changes by clicking Apply. So I can close out of Chrome for now. Hopefully that's all working. Let's try it again. If we right click on the file, the OpenVPN file, start OpenVPN on this config file. Hmm, well, this is kind of embarrassing. Let's uh, see if we can figure out what's going on. Bring up the log window again. We see zero bytes sent to SSL, okay. Uh, I believe that would indicate that the OpenVPN or the Stunnel server on the Raspberry Pi is not quite working the way it should. If we had an incorrect certificate or key, we would get some number of bytes transferring over. <clears throat> Let's see if uh, we can figure out what's causing this problem. I probably have a typo in one of the configuration files. Okay. So uh, let me kind of explain what I was just doing. Um, I went into the uh, folder that contains the logs, which is slash var slash log, and uh, found the log file for Stunnel, which is um, inside a subdirectory called Stunnel4, and uh, that didn't show anything. So I figured Stunnel wasn't working properly. And then I manually called Stunnel4, which is the, the name of the program, and we see here that we have an error on line five of the configuration. So let me take a look at my notes real quick and see if I can figure out why that is not working. Uh, this is actually a really simple error. I forgot to put an equal sign there for both of them. Okay, so like you, uh, it should be pretty obvious now, every line pretty much has an equal sign except for the OpenVPN line. So yeah, a typo. Um, Kind of feel bad that this isn't a video, but um, I guess it's kind of useful to know how to troubleshoot these problems. I'm going to go. I'm going to go ahead and leave this in the video. There's a possibility you'll make a mistake too. Anyway, so we're going to save the file with Control O. Press Enter. Exit with Control X. 
And I'm going to go ahead and try it again. Stun all four. Good. No errors. I think that was the only problem. Uh, let's hope so. Um, again, just to make sure that there's no issues that are going to happen if we ever restart the Pi, I'm going to go ahead and restart the Pi. Uh, you don't need to. But again, I like to do this anytime I make any noteworthy change because I hate to find out if there's a problem uh, you know, weeks down the line if I ever have to restart the Raspberry Pi. So shut down dash R now. I just want to connect to the Raspberry Pi to make sure it's uh, started back up. Um, again, you do not need to do this whenever you want to get to your VPN. I'm just doing this to verify um, that we can connect. Okay, that's good. So we now know that the Raspberry Pi is online. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. Okay, let's try again. I'm going to right-click on the OVPN file, go to Start Open VPN on this config file, and it's still not working. Man, I just I cannot win. Okay, let's bring up the log window yet again. Okay, so it is. Here, let me uh. Let me close out of that. Okay, so now we get a slightly different error, which is again probably my fault, and we're going to fix that. Um, we see here we do get some bytes to transfer. That means we are able to make a connection with Stunnel on the uh, Raspberry Pi. What's happening though is OpenVPN is probably not letting the connection work. So let's see if we can find an error in the OpenVPN log. All right, so uh, I figured out the problem. Again, it was another typo that I made. Uh, I do apologize for this, um, but again, it's important that um, that we be able to troubleshoot things. So I'm going to go ahead and leave this in the video instead of editing it out. Okay, so what I ended up finding, uh, or what I ended up doing, is uh, I used service open VPN stop to, uh, to shut down the open VPN server. And then I started the OpenVPN server from the command line. I used OpenVPN dash dash config, and then the path to the configuration file. And uh, when I did that, I got these error messages. So we get our, our Diffie-Hellman, our certificate authority, our certificate, and our key. Those lines did not work, and it's because no such file or directory. Now. If we look if we look in uh, in this folder, I forgot to put the keys subfolder. It's actually in oops in the keys subfolder. So again, another typo, it's really easy to do this. And I'm, I'm leaving this in the video because uh, it's easy to make a mistake. All right, so let's go back to the um, OpenVPN configuration file. So nano slash etc slash OpenVPN slash server.conf. Uh, these four lines, we need to put keys uh, is a subdirectory that I left out. All right, so now it will hopefully work. I hope that was the uh, last error that I made. All right, so we have, uh, oop, there we go. <laughs> All right, so um, now these paths should be correct. Control O to save the file, press enter, Control X to exit, and let's try again. Excellent. So now that worked. We get initialization sequence completed. I'm going to do Control C to close that program. Like before, I'm going to go ahead and shut down, or I'm going to restart to make sure everything works properly on a fresh start. All right, so it's been a minute or two. Um, again, let's verify the Raspberry Pi has started back up. We don't need to do this normally, but uh, we're going to go ahead and connect again. 
Okay, good. We know the Raspberry Pi is online. We can close TerraTerm. Okay, this, <laughs> uh, let's hope this should work. So go to the OpenVPN file, right click on it, start OpenVPN on this config file. And that looks much better. Let's see. Ooh, access is denied. Oh, wait, no, there we go. Okay. Initialization sequence completed. I think that that other error was uh, unrela um, an unrelated issue or uh, something like that. But yeah, what you want to see is you get a whole bunch of route additions, which is um, setting up the Windows uh, kind of forwarding for VPNs. And then your last line should be an initialization sequence completed. That's good. That means it's working, uh, at least in theory. Um, you need to leave this window open. If you close the window, you're closing your VPN connection. So leave that open. You can minimize it. And let's make sure we have internet access. So go ahead and open up your web browser. And um, let's uh, bring up a web page. Really, any web page is fine. Uh, I don't know. I guess we can go to Amazon. OK, so uh, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. I don't need to advertise for Amazon. I'm sure you don't really care about that. Um, so yeah, it's working. Now, um, because this computer, this Windows computer, is on my home network, I don't really have a way to prove to you that it's working, because when I'm connected to the VPN or when I'm not, my IP address will be the same. But what we're going to do now is we're going to set up my Android smartphone to do the same thing with the VPN. And on that, I can prove to you that it's working because um, when I'm not on the VPN, I will have one IP address, which is through my um, cellular network. And when I am on my VPN, it'll show my home IP address, or at least the, the dynamic one, which I happen to have this particular minute. <clears throat> so right now, we have the server all set up, and it's working. We know it works. Um, we have the Windows computer set up and working, and it works. And all that's left is, optionally, setting up an Android smartphone. And I'll, that I can prove to you that it does, in fact, work. What we need to do is we need to create a configuration file for OpenVPN, another one, because we're going to copy that to the Android phone. And we need to copy the um, .p12 um, file for uh, SSL Droid, which is the equivalent of Stunnel for Android. If we uh, To get that one file, we're going to go ahead and bring up TerraTerm again. Connect to your Raspberry Pi. Again, use the IP address for your Pi, which might be different. Type in your username and password. OK, so. We need to get to the directory that contains our uh, .p12 file for Stunnel. Um, we're going to do sudo s, which is, again, it'll let you run a bunch of commands as an administrator. We're going to cd slash etc slash Stunnel. That'll get us to the uh, folder that has the files. We can use ls to list all the files. And this is the file we need to copy to, uh, to my phone. Um, and to get it to the phone, I'll first have to, have to copy it to my Windows computer. So um, we, we need to copy that file. I'm going to go ahead and copy it into the home directory for the, uh, the Pi user. Um, so if I do cp stunnel.p12, and we're going to copy into slash home slash Pi. So now if we go cd slash home slash pi, we're now in the home directory for pi. If we use ls, we see the file. Now this is great, but if if I, in Windows, if I connect to the Raspberry Pi um, using Swish, which I'll get to in a minute, I won't be able to read that file because it is going to connect to the Raspberry Pi not as an administrator, but as the regular pi user. So we need to change file permissions or our, our file ownership of that file. So ch own, and then the username, which is pi, and then the file name, stunnel.p12. And 
chgrp. So it's change group pi stunnel.p12. So I went over this in the previous video. Basically, um, we're giving the username pi ownership of the file, and we're changing the group owner of the file to the, uh, the pi group. OK, so now we can copy the file to Windows. Um, like I mentioned in the previous video, you can do it all on the command line, but it gets really annoying and, and yeah. So if we uh, bring up File Explorer, and you go to this PC, you go to Swish. Again, I covered how to install Swish and how to use it in the previous video. Check out that video if you have not seen it. Everything will make much more sense. And we already set up our connection in that previous video. You double click on that. Type in your password. And there's the file that we want. So if you drag and drop that onto your desktop, we now have the file. All right, we can close that. We need to make a text file. I'll go ahead and do it on the desktop. Right click, new text document. And I'm going to do the same as before. I'm going to call it homevpn.ovpn. Get rid of the .txt. And press enter and click yes. And again, right click, open with. Choose notepad. Make sure you're not checking always use. Don't check that. Click OK. There's no need to type it all out. Um, what we can do is copy and paste because why bother typing it all out? So if you go to the uh, the file you made for your, your Windows PC, you can open that in notepad. And we'll select everything and we'll copy it. And then we'll go here and we'll paste it. And close the original file. OK, now we need to change some things because we're no longer using this for desktop client. We're going to use it for smartphone client. So OK, up here, everything is the same. That's all fine. The certificate authority is the same. That doesn't change. That's fine. What we need to change is the cert and the key. So let me edit the comments. And then now I'm going to uh, go back to TerraTerm, and I'm going to, like before, I'm going to cap those files to, to, op to look at them and then copy and paste the, uh, the text over here. So we now have this file. I'm going to go ahead and save it. Close out of that. We can close out of this. We can... Well, I'll leave this open, but I'll minimize it. We don't need it anymore. OK, so now we have our homevpn.ovpn file, and we have our stunnel.p12 file. We need to copy these over to the Android smartphone. I'm going to go ahead and plug in my phone. So my phone's uh, plugged in. Go to, I'm going to bring up my phone. And I'm going to copy the files into the download folder. You can put them really wherever you want. Um, we'll go ahead and drag and drop them from the desktop onto my phone. And we don't need these files on the computer anymore, so we can put them in the trash can. And uh, now let's look at the phone, and I'll show you how to get that running, and I'll actually prove to you that it's working. Okay, so I've got my, uh, my Android phone here, and um, we need to install two apps. There's OpenVPN Connect and SSL Droid. Both of them are in the Android, or I mean, in the uh, Google Play Store. So if you bring up the Play Store, let's search for, well, I've already searched for them. Let's go to SSL Droid. Bring that up. Go to Install. Accept. And let's go back. And we'll now search for OpenVPN. OK, there's a bunch of options here. Um, you want OpenVPN Connect, which is the, uh, the actual app from OpenVPN. And install, accept.
Okay, so I'm gonna go back to the uh, main screen. Uh, let's see, where did it? Yeah, okay, so put them over here. Uh, we have an icon for SSL Droid and an icon for OpenVPN and Connect. First, we need to set up SSL Droid. This is the app that is like um, Stunnel for Android. If you go to More, Add Tunnel, give it a name. I'm going to call it Home VPN. Local port would be 1337. Remote host is going to be your domain, the, uh, the, the, the domain name for your Raspberry Pi. In this demo and in my other video, I'm using one of my domains, which is cgartwork.com. But again, that is not going to work for you. You need to use the domain name that you uh, purchased and that you're using for your Raspberry Pi. Remote port would be 443. The PKCS12 is going to be the .p12 file that we copied over earlier. So push on or tap on the dot dot dot. I copied it over to download and stunnel.p12. I didn't have a password, so just go to apply. Go to more. Start service. If we now drag down to see notifications, we have started and serving one tunnels. And then we also have notifications that the program's installed, which we, uh, we don't need. Okay, if we go back and go to OpenVPN Connect, it'll bring up the uh, home screen. If you go to More, Import, Import Profile from SD Card. Again, I put it in Download, and then I have my .ovpn file. Select. We get here Profile Successfully Imported. Touch Connect. Actually, uh, well, yeah, here, I'll let it connect, but I'll, I'll disconnect in a second. Okay, so it's showing it's connected, but I'm going to go ahead and disconnect. What I wanted to show you is um, when I'm not on the VPN. All right, so if I open up Chrome, if I search for my IP, we'll see I have a public IP address of 208.54.4.236 now that would happen to be my current IP address from my cellular network provider so this is not my home IP address now if I connect to the VPN we'll see that should change so if I go back to OpenVPN connect if I go to connect it'll uh, try to connect it'll show that we're now connected now I've noticed that sometimes it'll take about 30 seconds to a minute before it'll um, before the phone will actually update and use the uh, VPN connection. But I'm going to go ahead and try going back to Chrome. So if I refresh the page by pulling down, you see that refresh icon. We now see that I have a different public IP address, and there we go. So um, there we have it. We have. Uh, we have a VPN uh, server set up on the Raspberry Pi, and then we have uh, my phone and my desktop computer able to connect to the VPN server. Anyway, I hope you liked the video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. If you know anybody that might benefit from the video, please share it with them. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it.